question was First, oh, First Nations relations. Yes, First Nations, what's the plan for that? John has done a phenomenal job on that. I mean, it's Is just he about out of budget for uh, what he can do in his portfolio? <laughs> or We're, No, I mean, well, he works with Treasury Board, and with we do have a First Nations Committee of Cabinet, a working group of Cabinet, which I chair. Um, so, you know, we are working with him on the broad picture. Because the thing about the First Nations issues is that on the on the First Nations side with negotiations, it's they think of it holistically. So, you know, for them, um, an agreement on forestry might, you know, they, they don't want to talk about just forestry. They want to talk about social conditions. They want to talk about pre early childhood development. Mm -hmm. They want, you know, and, um, and so it's a holistic discussion from their side and from our side, too. I mean, we need to be thinking about these things broadly. So it's not just a forestry agreement. We're thinking about other resources as well. We're also thinking about how we can support the community, Let, you know, give people the tools they need to succeed. And that's why we try. That's why we're, we created the committee so that we're really working across government, trying to break down the silos. It's worked a lot better. And I, you know, I we have signed 400 agreements, most of them economic, with First Nations since I became premier. 400. And you know, we've seen some treaties finally. Produced. Well, it almost begs the question: What's the point of the treaty process now with capital T, when you've got? an ability to sign all kinds of other agreements and, and look into all kinds of other arrangements that don't involve a full, whole nationality decision. Some First Nations don't want treaties, and I, I respect that. And we need to, so we need to create agreements that will allow us to work together with them. But treaties are still the gold standard for discussion, because what the treaty does is it sets up a framework, almost a language for discussion. It's 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 because it'll you know it draws it, it sets a relationship where we all know who is responsible for what. So all right, you you're going to be responsible for paving the roads, and I'm going to be responsible for planning where they go. I mean, it's not that much you know it, it is it is different, but a, a similar thing happens with municipal governments. We know we each of us know what we're supposed to do and what we're responsible for funding and supporting, mm -hmm. and we we have a forum then a clear way to have a discussion. Treaties are a little are a lot like that, and that's why it's the gold standard. And if you look at what the NISCA have accomplished in the years since their treaty came into force, it's incredible. Some of the most entrepreneurial, one of the most entrepreneurial First Nations in the province is the NISCA. And I would argue the achievement of their treaty was really what enabled it's that blossom. for everything else. Absolutely. Really not, that like they all, not like they weren't always entrepreneurial, but it was really hard to get a foothold and the, their treaty's given them that. So that, to me, is the gold standard. And we want to work toward that with all the First Nations that want to get there. But we recognize, not all of them do, and some of them are closer than others. And my view is we should be focusing on getting to treaty with the ones that are closest to try and push them across the line. And we now have a federal government that's finally well, coming back yeah, to the I'm table. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to say the, the whole monkey wrench in treaty negotiations is always you have to bring the feds in at some point. Yes, and they've been over the years they've been very slow and reluctant, I think, to really mm -hmm. um, to engage deeply, and this new federal government's shown every sign that they want to. So we haven't really, you know, they're still working to get there, because um, they're just, you know, they've just started, but I think that they will. And having them at the table will make all the difference, because provincial government is not responsible for First Nations schools. The federal government has a constitutional responsibility for that. And a lot of First Nations will tell you, until our schools are fixed, we're not interested in having any more conversations. Mm -hmm. So we need the federal government to step